Good morning from the kitchen folks. Today I'm going to be making a not so innocent berry cider. And here are my key ingredients. I'm using apple juice from Concentrate, which just contains apple juice from Concentrate, no additives. I'm using two bottles of this Innocent Berry Light. I wouldn't normally use um, Innocent Smoothies in a cider, not because I have anything against Innocent Smoothies, but they're a little bit expensive. But this one was 51p. Hey, I'm a Yorkshireman, you can't beat a bargain, can you? Now, this contains just fruit, and I'm going to read out the ingredient list to you. One and a half crushed pears, two squeezed oranges, 12 crushed strawberries, a splash of water, a piece of pressed watermelon, a pressed apple, 16 crushed raspberries, a mashed banana, a fifth of a crushed white guava, a splash of pressed beetroot, a chunk of pressed carrot and some vitamins B1, B2, B3, B6 and E. Innocent. So I think this is going to make a very, very tasty cider. I'm using the turbo cider method, which means I'm not using actual fruit, I'm using juices. Check out the Facebook group Turbo Ciders for All if you want to read more about turbo ciders, but they're a lot quicker than making ciders from the fruit itself. I'm also going to use some pectolase because as you can see that's very thick and not particularly um, opaque, so I'm hoping the pectolase will mean that it's a clearer brew in the end. For the first time ever, I'm going to use Cross My Loof Cider Yeast. I've never used this before. I normally use Lalvin EC1118, um, but everything I've had from Cross My Loof has been good, so I thought I'd try the cider yeast. I'm going to make a little bit of tea uh, to provide some tannins with from tea bags and spring water. And I may or may not add brew sugar, but I want to check out what the gravity of the juice alone is before I decide whether or not I'm going to put some brew sugar in. So to begin with, I'm going to put four tea bags into my pan. I'm going to add some spring water on top. And I use spring water because the tap water in Leeds where I live is a bit chlorine-y. Put some heat on. I'm going to get that brewing now to make a, a good strong tea. So a turbo cider, quick and easy to make. I'm just chucking all my juices into the demijohn. It doesn't get much easier than that, does it? I'm going to pop a teaspoonful of pectolase in before I add my final um, juice. So that goes in there. When the final juice will wash that through the funnel. So this has taken approximately a minute so far. So I've just put a bit of spring water inside the innocent bottles. I'm just going to give them a shake because there's lots of uh, residue left around the bottles and I don't want to waste any. That'd be silly. You can see my tea is boiling away very very nicely. That's almost done. Just give the bags a, a mash with the potato masher. So I just lift the bags and give them a squeeze, get all the juice out. And then the tea, like the juice, goes through the funnel. So I'm just going to pour this into my hydrometer jar because I want to see what the gravity of this liquid is before I decide whether or not I'm going to add some sugar to it. So the gravity is currently very low at 1.040. I want it a bit higher than that, so I am going to add some brew sugar. So again, I'm adding a small amount of spring water into my saucepan, and I'm going to add to that water 500 grams of brew sugar. Now the sugar is very fine and it does dissolve easily, but I will need to put a bit of heat on. I'm just going to give this a little stir. This looks to have dissolved enough to me now, so I'm going to turn the heat off. And that is now also going to go into the demijohn. So 
So I'm just giving it a shake around to mix it together. Consider it mixed. I'm going to pour some into my hydrometer jar again. And that won't be going back into the demijohn, which leaves me some space in the top for when it begins to ferment and forms a krausen, which is the foamy head on top. So before I can take the true original gravity, I need to get this to cool to 20 degrees. So I've just got it standing in some cold water at the minute because the hot water that was with the brew sugar and with the tea has taken it over that temperature. So it's time to add my yeast. I'm going to add half of this packet. This packet will do up to 10 litres. Uh, and a gallon demijohn is just uh, under five litres. So now I've got my yeast in, I'm just going to shake the demijohn around to get it to mix and sink. So I'm just going to pop my airlock in, in nice and snug. And that's about it really. I'm just waiting now for what's in the hydrometer flask to cool down a bit. And temperature's now showing 19.8 which is fine, it needs to be about 20 for me to take the gravity. So in goes the hydrometer. And that is a much better reading this time around. So this is now an original gravity of 1.060, 1060. So that's my demijohn all labelled up. I'll catch you on the next film, which will be the clearing when this is finished fermenting, probably in a couple of weeks time. See you then, folks. Good afternoon from the kitchen, folks. This is an apple and berry cider update, and I have a little titivation with it as well. So let's have a look at what's gone on. So here it is. It's rather opaque. It's not completely clear by any means, but you can see there's definitely some opacity uh, to it. Uh, what we have got, though, is a large amount of trub and sediment, all the stuff that you don't want in there. And in fact, that's enough to take a full 750ml bottle out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rack this off. I'm going to take it away from most of the sediment into a fresh sanitised demijohn. I'm going to add another litre of apple juice from concentrate. And I'm then going to put it back with a little bit of sediment where there'll be some suspended yeast and leave it to ferment for a bit longer. So I'm going to take the bung out and I'm not going to siphon because I'm not trying to avoid getting all the sediment, just most of the sediment. So I'm just going to pour and see what happens. I've got a fine-ish filter in there. So hopefully that will catch the bigger pieces of stuff that I don't want. It smells really good. There's definitely a, a winey smell, so that must be from the berries. It's kind of a, a rich, if I had to put a colour on the smell, I'd say a rich red smell. So yeah, so that kind of does work, doesn't it? Okay, I'm going to stop at that point. I've got down into the sediment, and if I show you this, you'll see that there is some sediment in there. And there's some sedimenty bits which will have yeast in dripping through. So I'm just going to let that process continue for a little while until it's all drained through. I'm just giving the uh, sediment a bit of a mix around because I'm going to add a bit of raw sediment in here now as well. Just to guarantee that I do get enough yeast through for it to continue to ferment. And that's enough. And it will make it cloudy, but that's fine because it will still settle again. So at this point now, I need to take the gravity of this as it is and record that if I'm to get an accurate final gravity to work out the alcohol percentage. So I'm just going to pour a little bit of this into my uh, hydrometer tube. So let's see what the gravity currently is. It's a good one. And the gravity as it currently stands is 0 0.992. 2.992. So that tells me that the sugar has been eaten and if I add some more now it should um, ferment again hopefully. So now I need to add my new apple juice into the demijohn and this contains sugar which the yeast which is in there will hopefully enjoy and I'll get a small 
extra bit of fermentation. And I can already see bubbles and movement, which means happiness. So again, I need to take the gravity because I've now got a new starting gravity and that leaves me a little bit of space in the top of the demijohn as well in case it builds a Krausen. So my new starting gravity for the next round of fermentation is, drum roll please, 1.002, so not much, 1.002, so hopefully this will just push the final ABV up a little bit. So I'll give the airlock a clean, I'm going to pop that back in now. We might not see much activity in there, we might see a little bit, but I do know that the fermentation will continue very subtly and even that tiny ring of bubbles there tells me that there is something happening. So I'm just going to give this a little rinse, get the sticky off. And I'm now going to leave it for a week or so and see what happens. Next to its brethren. And in case you're wondering what the cloths are for, it's just to keep off any sunlight because uh, I've got a south facing conservatory that they're in front of. OK, I'll be back in a week or so's time. See you then, folks. Good morning from the kitchen, folks. It's apple and berry cider bottling day. So here it is. Now, I haven't put any finings in this. I'm not clearing it. It's started to clear naturally itself. You can see there's a small amount of sediment here. It's been in the Demijohn for three weeks now since I added the extra apple juice. Uh, it hasn't done anything in the airlock whatsoever. It's had this permanent tiny ring of, uh, of bubbles, but I'm not seeing any activity. So I think it's just ready for bottling now. So before I can add my wine to my bottles, I need to prime them. And I'm doing so by adding a very generous heaped teaspoon of sugar into each 750ml bottle. And then if I need to use the small bottle, which is just kind of a reserve bottle, I'll add less sugar into that one. So I've got my priming sugar in my bottles. Now it's bung out. Siphoning tube in. I'm holding the tube in place with this clip. And you can actually see in the damage on the tube going down so you can see that there is definitely some clarity already. It will clear in the bottles uh, hopefully. Um, the bottom of the tube is just into the sediment and that's fine because the first bit that comes out is going into the hydrometer jar. Let's crack on. It smells nice, really fruity. I'll definitely get five 750ml bottles if I'm lucky I'll be able to fill that small one as well. We'll see. The reaction to the sugar is evident with the sparkle. So hopefully the suspended yeast, which is in the cider, will mean that I'll get a good fizz in this. And there we go, perfect. So I've got bubbles in the tube just as the last bottle was filled. It's slightly overfilled, I'll need to pour some out. But that was a perfect guesstimation. So I've got my bottles here, and I'll need to add bungs to four of them. Okay, I'm using plastic bungs, and I've had these softening in very hot water to make them more malleable. It just makes them easier to push into the bottles. Oh, with that said, it's still quite challenging. Can you see that? That's pain. No pain, no gain. Oh, ah, right. Glad that job's over. I've got the bungs in place, but I need to use cages now to secure them because that pressure will build up when the uh, the yeast that's in suspension starts to feed on the sugar, the priming sugar that I've put in there this uh, will create a lot of pressure inside from the CO2. So the cage is an essential safety feature to stop the bung from flying off. I also think that when you use these kind of bottles that have got 
the champagne stoppers that it adds a little bit of drama on theatre to the opening, you know? It's quite nice, isn't it? So these are done. The next one is a flip, and this is such a genius invention. I mean, I have no idea how old the flip top bottle is actually. Someone tell me in the comments, but what a genius invention. Look at that. Brilliant, isn't it? Just keep using it. So the next step is just to rinse my bottles because I don't want any residue on them. I hate sticky bottles and I want them to dry before I can label them. So there's my bottles washed, I just need to leave them to dry. So now I need to work out what the final gravity of this brew is. In goes the hydrometer. And the final gravity of this brew is 0 0.99. Four. Okay, to work out the alcohol by volume, we need to do a little bit of maths now. So the original, original gravity was 1.060. I deduct from that the initial final gravity, which was 0 0.992. And this is before I added the extra apple juice. And at that point I had 0 0.068. And if I multiply that by 131.25, that equals 8.925%. Then I started off with another gravity of 1.002. If I deduct from that 0 0.994, that equals 0 0.008. So my 0 0.008 I multiply this by 131.25 and that gives me 1.05. So that's the alcohol by volume increase after adding the final litre of apple juice. So if I add this now to 8.925, I've got a final alcohol by volume of 9.975%. This is a rocket fuel cider. However, it will increase ever so slightly in the bottle because of the carbon sugar in there. So I'm going to just put 10% on the bottle labels. So I've just made my labels up using a very simple template on Microsoft Word. I'm just going to print these off. Right, I'm just going to label my bottles. Try and do it as neatly as possible. Take a little bit of pride. And there we have it. Six labelled apple and berry cider bottles. So welcome to the conservatory folks. This is where my bottles will condition. It's a south facing conservatory. And despite the fact that it's still a bit of a rubbish day today, um, it's still warm in here and it stays really warm all the time. I'm just going to put my bottles down there. So on the left hand side is the apple and berry cider next to a blueberry cider, which I bottled yesterday, uh, next to a box, which is also full of bottles of cider, uh, all conditioning. So the next film that you see from me will be in about two weeks time. And that's when I'm opening and sampling. So I'll see you then, folks. Good evening from the kitchen, folks. Today I am opening my apple and berry cider. I'm hoping for something that looks good in the glass, it pours, it's got a sparkle, it smells good, but above all, it tastes good. If I can get most of those things, I'll be a happy chappy. So let's see. Okay, I'm just removing the cage. I think there has been some carbonation because the bung looks to have risen very slightly. Do I get a pop? Oh, and a bit of vapour. I can see bubbles rushing to the neck of the bottle. That's a good sign. Let's see how it looks in the glass. I think we can all agree that's got a sparkle. Right. It's fairly opaque. It's not completely clear, but it looks pretty decent. Definite bubbles in there. It smells extremely fruity. The berryness definitely comes through. See how it tastes? Mm. 
Wow. Nice. Medium sweet. I wasn't expecting that. It's 10%. I thought it might be a lot drier. It's got quite a bit of uh, fullness to the flavour. The, uh, the berries definitely add something to this, quite a lot. It's decent, I like it. It's got a very rich, dark fruit kind of flavour. And honestly, it's a very pleasant drink. So, cheers folks, I'm going to enjoy this one. Good health to you, and I'll catch you on the next brew. The film that you've just watched is a Moss Home and Garden production. You can find more by going to www.mosshomeandgarden.co.uk. I'd just like to say thank you very much for supporting my YouTube channel and for watching my films. It really is very much appreciated. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe to my YouTube channel in order to receive future updates about the Home and Garden films which I upload. You can find my YouTube channel by going to www.mosshomeandgarden.co.uk Please click on the red subscribe button. When you've done that, a little bell will appear. If you press that also, then you'll get future updates about the films which I upload. If you like my films, if you like my style of filming, then you might also like my travel channel, which you will find by going to youtube.com forward slash Stuart Moss or typing www.mosstravel.tv Again, if you could subscribe to that channel, it would be hugely appreciated. If you'd like to get Moss Home and Garden updates on Facebook, then please open Facebook and do a search for Moss Home and Garden, and you will find the page. If you like the page, then you will get future updates on there. And if you'd like to connect on Instagram for home, garden and travel photography, as well as some stories, then my username is Stu Moss, S-T-U-M-O-S-S. If you'd like to connect on Twitter, then my username is at Stuart Moss. And if you'd like to contact me about film usage or any other issue, please just email me on stewmosshomegarden at gmail.com. Once again, thank you very much for supporting my channel, for watching my films. I do appreciate it. I'd just like you all to have a great day.